was Giuseppe Verdi's first great operatic success. It is, of course, our old friend Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Nabucodonosor in Italian, Nabucodonosor. <laughs> now, you know how most operas are all about passionate love? Well, there's very little passionate love in Nabucco. It's more of a thriller, really. And the scene opens in the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. Nabucco is attacking the city, and the Hebrews, Levites, and Vestal Virgins are weeping, wailing, and rending their garments. Here we go. <laughs> for a bit <laughs> and they tell the Vestal Virgins to get with it <laughs> they say pray O oh, ye virgins and rend your veils that the enemy's fury be brought Here are the best things going. Disperse and destroy all the Syrian legions. We've sinned, but for mercy, forgiveness, we pray. We pray thee for mercy. We pray. I wonder if Nabucco could have been the first hint or portent of ecumenicalness or ecumenomanism to come <laughs> in the future. I tell you why I think this, because years ago I was married into and attended Holy Blossom Reform Temple for many years. And takes place on Sunday and is the nearest thing to C of E you can get while still remaining Jewish. <laughs> and when one is having one's ritual weep and wail, like it might be on Yom Kippur, <laughs> even there, it never sounded like this. It didn't, it, it sounded more like this. Yes, jolly not. <laughs> well, then Zachariah, the high priest, comes in with his sister, Anna, who's always busy doing something in the opera, but nobody's ever found out quite what it is. <laughs> and for Nina, Nabucco's daughter, whom they have captured and are going to use to blackmail him to leave them alone. Well, now, Zachariah sings this. saying before, he's a splendid fellow, but I think he's, he'd be good at O oh Soli Mio, but a canter, let's face it, he ain't. <laughs> well then, 
they cheer up a bit uh, with this until Ishmael, nephew of Zedekiah, king of Jerusalem, comes in to say that Nabucco has entered the city. Zachariah gives him Fanina for safekeeping, and they go out weeping and wailing again, and the sound fades away into the distance. chords at the end of this. <laughs> That's it, you see, he does it to wake the audience up for a nice round of applause. Oh, he's got marvellous showmanship, he really has. <laughs> well, now, Ishmael had been the Hebrew ambassador to Babylon, where he first met and fell in love with Fenina. He got put into prison while there, and she rescued him. So now he's going to return the compliment. He's about to whisk her into a secret passage when Abigail, reputedly Nabucco's elder daughter, charges him with some Babylonian soldiers disguised as Hebrews, which is their rotten, sneaky way of moseying in. <laughs> she is also in love with Ishmael, and she tells him, Give up for Nina and come to me and I will spare the Hebrews. He says, take my life but my heart, never. <laughs> Hell holds no fury like a woman scorns, as they say, so now she hates them both. <laughs> and the whole three of them start singing at once. tell you. Abigail is singing how she loves Ishmael and she wished he loved her, but if he doesn't love her, he better watch out what's going to happen to him. <laughs> Ishmael is singing, oh, the poor Hebrews, they're going to be conquered by Nabucco. Isn't it terrible? And Fenina suddenly gets converted to the God of Israel. <laughs> Since they're all singing at the same time, rather fortissimo, this bit's rather hard to understand. Well, next, all the Hebrews rush back in, chased by Nabucco with a bloody sword. <laughs> on a horse yet. <laughs> and Zechariah bars his way. He's profaning the temple of the God of Israel. So what, says Nabucco, I worship the God Baal, and he keeps coming. So Zechariah holds the knife at Fenina's throat, while she pleads with her father to spare the Hebrews and save her life. But Abigail's saying, come on, Dad, get with it. Come on in. <laughs> you see, this will get rid of Fenina, so then she can have another bash at Ishmael. <laughs> Nabucco proclaims himself conqueror. Zachariah raises the dagger uh, to plunge it into Fenina when Ishmael grabs his wrist, throws Fenina into her father's arms, and... So now, of course, they've got no hostage. So Abigail and Nabucco are going to wipe them out, so they all put a frightful curse on Ishmael. It's a very uncursy curse, isn't it? <laughs> is Nabucco's palace in Babylon. Fenina is acting regent while Nabucco is off conquering more Jews. 
Abigail comes in, she's absolutely nowhere. And she has got a paper that she has stolen from Nabucco saying she isn't his daughter at all, but the child of a slave. And she sings a soliloquy. But she's got a voice of such power, range, and penetration that I bet the whole of Babylon heard it. <laughs> she sings how she was once sweet, kind, good, and loving, and now she's cruel, mean, vengeful, and neurotic. <laughs> and it's all Daddy-O's fault. <laughs> well, then the high priest of Baal comes in and says, What's going on? He says, as quickly as Nabucco sends these Hebrew prisoners back here, Tanina is freeing them. What on earth are they up to? He said, I think I'd better put a curse on Fanina to be on the safe side. <laughs> and I've spread the rumour that uh, Nabucco has been killed in battle, so when he shows up back here, we'll nab him. And I think you ought to be the queen. Oh, because she's terribly pleased about that. Well, the next scene, Zachariah comes in with some Levites and the tablets of the law. You see, now Fanina has been converted to the God of Israel. He's come to do a job on the rest of them. <laughs> well, then the Levites go into Fanina's apartment and they run into Ishmael. And they start cursing the poor blighter all over again. <laughs> guess any more cursy than the other one, do you? <laughs> He's not a patch on cursing like this one. <laughs> He's not even as good as this one. <laughs> Perhaps it was he such a nice young man. It wasn't a good curse. I mean, old Wagner could curse up a storm. But anyway, it had an effect on Ishmael because he's absolutely terrified. He, he says, uh, For the love of living God, I beg you spare me from your curses. Give me death or terror of an anima will drive me mad. any notice if they go on and on and on until Zachariah, uh, Fanina and Anna come in. Anna says, for heaven take leave for Ishmael alone, won't you? He said, after all he saved Fanina and she's converted to the God of Israel. It's the only thing Anna says in the entire opera. <laughs> But it does the trick, because they quickly uncurse Ishmael. <laughs> well, then Abdallah, Nabucco's servant, comes in. He tells them he's heard Nabucco's dead, and that Abigail's been acclaimed queen, and is out to get Trinina, so she better vermoose while she can. Then Abigail and the priest of Baal come in. Abigail snatches the crown from Trinina and puts it on her own head. And in comes Nabucco. He's not dead at all, and they haven't nabbed him. He snatches the crown from Abigail and puts it on his own. This whole thing takes six bars. <laughs> it's the quickest crown snatch in the whole of town. But then they have general consternation and they have general consternation music. the most divine sing-along you ever heard. It really is beautiful. It's all about, um, let me see, what's it like? It's about direst wrath. It's about doom and, and uh, terror and squalor and horror and all sorts of dreadful things. 
but you never think it to hear the tune. It's 12 bars long and absolutely gorgeous. Nabucco starts. Suppression, Istanti, Donira, Patale, Smoti, Sembianti, Giappiomba, Giappiomba, e Terror, Le Volgori, Tonno, Di Giudona, La Le, Sapresa, Abigail starts. Sapresa, Sicuti, and he hammers. Solmote, Sambiante, Sulti, Sambianti. Oh, you can't get that. Jumpion, but jumpion might her own. And then they sing with a pen, and she goes, Let a glory to God. No, that that isn't all, you see. And then Ishmael starts it, and the book goes on, smaltzes around, does harmony underneath, you see. Nina comes in. Now you have, I'm sure this is where barbershop quartet singing came from. They've got the complete barbershop set up here. Gorgeous. And having done it four times as 12 bars, guess what? All in. And they sing away and Everybody, it's absolutely lovely. But I tell you another reason why I think it's barbershop quartet. You know how a barbershop quartet number never just stops. There's always some smarty in the middle of the harmony going. Uh, there they are, you see, and he's going. But he's never allowed to get away with this. The high tenor's going. This last bit, what it is, it's sweet and <laughs> Well, after they all got carried away with that, we have to come back to the story. And uh, they've been having a lovely time, you see. Well, Nabucco says... You Babylonians, you've all become traitors to me, so the heck with the god Baal. And he says, I'm more than a match for those Hebrews. I can do them in every time, so the heck with the god of Israel. So now, from now on in, you can jolly well bow down and worship me. Because hear this, I am God. Most frightful hubbub. <laughs> so just cheer, everybody else is shocked, and Fanina says, I'm a Hebrew now, so I won't bow down. Nabucco grabs her by the wrist and says, prostrate yourself or else. And whoop, he's struck by lightning. The crown is snatched from his head by supernatural power and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Some stuff, eh? <laughs> then he sings what I think is the only male mad scene in Grand Opera. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> oh, what does he do? The with dire and dismal shadows and the blood red sky has fallen on my head. Oh, 
something like that. I don't know, I can't remember that one. Anyway, he laughed and said, blood red skies falling on his head. That's what it is, you see. And then he says, who can help me? And Zachariah says, you know, the God of Israel, the priest of God of Israel said, well, this whole thing jolly well serves you right. <laughs> and he says, his blasphemy has been punished by the God of Israel. How do you know, says Abigail? The blasphemy could equally well have been punished by the god Baal, so there. <laughs> and she picks up the crown and puts it on her head. She's won. <laughs> but the next scene starts with a quotation. In fact, all, all, they all start with quotations, but this is a particularly good one. It's from the Bible. It says, The uh, wild beasts of the desert shall dwell in Babylon with owls and hoopoes shall dwell therein. What's a hoopoe? <laughs> well, we're in the hanging gardens of Babylon, and everybody is bowing down to Abigail. And the high priest of Baal comes in and hands her a death warrant to sign for Fenina and these Hebrews. Well, then Nabucco comes in. He looks frightful. <laughs> but he still thinks he's the boss because, you see, he's crazy. <laughs> Well, Abigail sends everybody out and tries to get him to put the royal seal on this death warrant. He got it for some reason. Probably can't get it off his finger. You know how it is. And uh, so he hesitates, but she gets him all confused and riled up. So he seals it and uh, she hands it out to the guard. He suddenly realized what he'd done after he'd done it. He has condemned his daughter to death. Abigail said, what? good is for Nina to us now she's turned Israelite. You've got another daughter, me. He says, I've got news for you. <laughs> You're not my daughter. You're the child of a slave and I've got a paper somewhere here to prove it. Was he looking around? She said, ha ha, I stole the paper from you. Here it is. And she tears it up. There it is. And she said, now only you know that I was a nobody. Now you're the nobody and I'm the queen. <laughs> Well, next we are on the banks of the Euphrates, where the captured Hebrews are doing forced labor. <laughs> they sing a lament for their homeland. Now, this is a very famous all-purpose lament. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Italians sang it when they were being politically oppressed. I think it was by the Austrians in the time of Garibaldi. And at Daddy's funeral, the populace broke out and sang it spontaneously. And you know, to this day in Europe, uh, when it's played, uh, the audience stand up in memory of the Jews killed by Hitler. So it's really, you know, it's gone a long way, this one. And it's rather beautiful. into a trance and he prophesies that the land of Judah will smite Babylon and there will be nothing left there but skulls and bones and it will be the abode of owls, snakes and hyenas and probably those hoopoes. <laughs> In Act 4, Nabucco wakes up thinking it's all been a nightmare. And he looks for his sword and is about to charge out to have another go at the Hebrews when he finds he's locked in. And out of the window, he sees Fenina being led away in chains by the guards. So it hasn't been a nightmare, so he falls on his knees and suddenly gets converted to the God of Israel. And bingo, he's sane again. <laughs> In come Abdallah and his attendants. They're thrilled Nabucco is better because they like the old fellow. 
And after one of those scenes, you know, the kind, Vieni and Giamo. You know how they are. Come, let us go. Go, we are coming. Let us go. <laughs> Come on, we're coming. Let us go, we're going. <laughs> Out they charge. Well, the last scene is in the hanging gardens where the high priest is sat standing by this huge statue of Baal ready to do in the condemned Hebrews that are coming into a sort of funeral march. Zachariah is giving last rites to Fenina, who's in ecstasies because she's about to become a martyr and sings... <laughs> she sings a very nice aria about her. <laughs> and then Nabucco charges in, waving another bloody sword. <laughs> I'm not swearing, it says that in the libretto. <laughs> and he says... Soldiers, shatter that baneful idol like dust to the ground. But before the soldiers can get there, boom, the idol goes up by itself in spontaneous combustion. <laughs> you see, it's a miracle. So now everybody gets converted. <laughs> Abigail staggers in. She's taken poison. She begs everybody's pardon and she's so sorry for all the terrible things she's done and she hopes she won't be eternally damned on account of she's been converted too. <laughs> Just in the nick of time, I think. <laughs> of course, now she falls dead. And in Nabucco is going to rebuild all the temples to the God of Israel and the whole thing winds up in the very best possible way because Everybody is on the same side. <laughs> Which you must admit is a very unusual occurrence. <laughs> but I still wish they'd had Shade Rack, Meshack and the Bednego. <laughs> I wonder how they'd have been if Verdi had written them. You know, they'd have fit beautifully into that, you know, that sing-along that I was telling you about before. I'm, I wonder that the conductor doesn't turn around to the audience and say, all sing in that one. <laughs> it audience participation and it'll fit these fellas too. Oh, Shade Rack and me Shack and a bad ego would never bow down to the idol the king had set up. And so they were cast in, were cast in together into the bird. about Nabucco, if you didn't know all the dire and terrible things that were going on in the story and just heard the music, you'd think they were all having a gorgeous time, wouldn't you? 